this video I'll be taking a look at the Gigabyte 990FXA UD5 motherboard. This is a AMD, one of Gigabyte's new AM3 Plus motherboards which supports all current AM3 CPUs as well as upcoming AM3 Plus bulldozer CPUs. There's also the UD3 and the UD7 boards, same line. The UD3 is slightly cheaper and UD5 is slightly more expensive. The only difference really being in the colours on the heat sinks and the number of graphics cards you can support in Crossfire and SLI. So let's have a quick look at what you can see on the box feature wise. AM3 Plus, driver MOSFET, Crossfire X and SLI, 333 onboard acceleration, don't even know what that is, some gigabyte technology, car outside, <laughs> um, I can wait. Okay, now 8 plus 2 phase state power, ultra durable, but also durable 3, that's gigabyte thing they use two times the copper in the motherboard, making it a really high quality board as well as using Japanese capacitors and ferrite chokes. So you can see that again all down here. The 108 decibel sound, it's high-end sound card thing. Blu-ray full rate lossless audio. Dolby Home Theater. It also supports three times USB power. Now what that is, is it basically puts more power to your USB ports. So if you're charging, say, a phone or an MP3 player off it, it'll charge faster. USB 3.0, SATA 3, so that's 6 gigabit. Um, and dual BIOS, so and it's also got a dual BIOS supports um, three terabytes drives and more, as well as and as well being dual BIOS, you sort of takes the risk out of flashing your BIOS because if you do happen to corrupt one, the the other BIOS will restore the corrupt BIOS from from itself basically. So you can see here, so just look in there, see what we get. Just same sort of stuff really, same stuff. There's some more features of the board there. Stuff there. On the back, let's see more features. So, okay, so now on the back, there's more features. 990FX, list it all eSATA, USB 3, high quality sound, SLI Crossfire, all that sort of stuff. Does three way SLI and three way Crossfire, so that's good. The UD5 does four way. No, the UD7 does four way, sorry. USB 3, so that's fast transfer. USB 3 power, which basically means you can charge things off of it, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I think so. Um, SATA 3, Crossfire SLI, all that sort of stuff. As well as some more features you could probably find out on the Gigabyte website. So now let's take a look inside and see what you actually get. So, a little bit. Oops. That, okay. Pretty plain box inside. Let's open that one. And there we go. Does look like it's been sort of stirred with a stick. Probably by the couriers. So you get the manual, which for a motherboard is quite useful. You can get you need to get like locations of different like headers and stuff. CD for it for drivers, but it's always best to download with the motherboard manufacturer site. Something. It's in French, whatever it is. And there's the multilingual installation guidebook. Don't know what the little French bit thing is. So here you now have an SLI bridge, a two-way SLI bridge, as well as this nice much bigger three-way SLI bridge, so you can use both. You then get two bags, each with two SATA cables in it. Um, each bag contains one right angled cable and one non right angled cable, so it's nice to get them. It's got clips on them. Oops. And you've got your I.O. shield. Which is actually very nice, it's all colour coded, so see all this stuff, so it labels them USB power, USB 3, ESA 3, ESA 3, SPDIF, PS2, so you can actually see so it's a nice coloured coded one, it's not just a cheap basic one. And in here, under this thing, which needs to be stopped down for some reason, come on, right, oh, it's stopped down, okay, so flap that up, okay, and there's the board itself in an anti-static bag. So I'll take a, look, a quick look at this board, lift it out. Oh, I see why that helps you lift the board out. Oh, something else under here, let's see what that is. Oh, so, what's that? Oh, you got a gigabyte case sticker, that's nice. Don't know why it fell down under there. It's definitely been sort of battery and shipping, but... Oh, what's that? <laughs> More stickers. And a Dolby Home Theatre sticker. Bit big, actually. <laughs> I might rather that was smaller, because it's too, really a bit too big to use. And then we'll fold the box back to... Sort of platform for this board to sit on. 
Okay. So there you go. That's the board. Take it out of this bag. And have a look at it. So tape on the bottom there. Okay, that's out. Okay, so it's gonna be two seconds, I'll get the board out of the bag and then come back. Okay, so now I got the board out of the bag, so here it is. A very nice looking board. Blue accents on the heat sink, it says ultra durable there to sort of show the ultra durable series, something dirt on it, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's not anything important. Um, another heat sink here. We have a nice large heat sink to actually provide really good cooling. Your rear IO, as I mentioned earlier, but I'll go over it again. You've got one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8 USB 2 ports, 2 USB 3 ports, 2 external serial, oh, lift it up, 2 external serial ATAs, um, SP, no, optical audio out, your 7.1 channel, or five, your well, surround sound audio, I think that's 7.1, maybe 5, yeah, 7.1 I think, PS2 port as well, which although some people might go, that's old, I like having it because for a person that have a PS2 keyboard, it's an old mechanical one, but it's a really nice board, so I don't want to replace it. So now let's take a look at the rest of the board. So what we have, AM3 Plus socket, which is AMD's new socket, two things to hold your thing, four RAM slots, it's, so you've got four RAM slots, um, so that's good, dual channel mode the RAM runs in, 24 pin power connection, a fan connection there, for a, for a case fan. Or you've got your CPU fan connection here, a uh, eight pin auxiliary power to your power supply here, sign here, oh, sorry, actually, um, ATI Crossfire X, should be AMD but they've still not updated it yet. Um, some, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, five PCI Express slots, um, they're all different sort of speeds, some are 16, some are other ones. You've got a 1X, a regular 1X, oh there you are, so it's 16X, 4X, 16X, 4X, 8X is the way they go. If you have a 1X PCI Express slot, regular PCI slot if you've got an old peripheral that you want to use as this new board. As far as this stuff goes, you've got your front panel audio header, um, a Firewire header, which is actually quite nice to get because I've got a Firewire port in my case and I can't use it with my current board. Another space for a case fan, some more headers for Com A, I don't know whether that'll be serial possibly, I don't know, quite old. Front USB. More front USB, so got a few of them actually, one, two, three, three USB headers, front USB 3.0 header, so that'll be if you're wanting to use like a front breakout box or whatever, you can use that. Unfortunately, there's not really many devices using the headers, they all seem to want to come out the back of the case and into the regular ports, which is a bit of a pain because I don't like that. So once they start using that header, that'll be good, and I'll probably get a new card reader for that. TPM front panel, I'm not sure what that'll be. System fan one, so that's an, yet another system fan. Um, header as well your connection to your front panel of your case and there's your dual BIOSes, you've got two BIOSes so that's good. The one thing I've noticed unfortunately is you don't seem to have a fan header around this area of the board so if you're wanting to use a rear case fan that connects to your board you're either going to have to get an adapter or run the cable across the board in quite a messy way so you're probably going to want to have to get an adapter for that if you've got a rear case fan that uses the motherboard header to connect. Also you've got all Japanese capacitors and in here you've got these big heat sinks which provide really good cooling to all your MOSFETs giving it really good cooling and long life. Nice gig gigabyte heat sink there, brand new gigabyte. And as far as drive connection ports go, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you've got eight SATA 3 ports. They're all, all SATA 3, 6 gigabit. Um, the black ones are provided by the AMD chipset. The grey ones are provided by the um, third party Marvel chipset. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, pretty much it. So it's a really, really nice motherboard fit. Pretty high-end. Pretty expensive, but not too bad, really, for what you're getting for your money. It's a really pretty high-end board. Okay, so thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe.